Hello everyone and welcome to video 3. Today we're going to talk about hooks. There's three main things you need to know about hooks. And those three things are the categories, the size, and some basic anatomy. Now, people may categorize hooks differently than I do, but I like to lump them into four categories. You got your dry fly hooks, your nymph hooks, your streamer hooks, and then your specialty hooks. So dry fly hooks, what makes a dry fly hook a dry fly hook, and this is one here, this is a dry fly, a standard dry fly hook, if I can get it off my finger, this is a standard dry fly hook. It, uh, the main feature that it has that sets it aside from other hooks is its light wire. It's constructed from light wire. And the reason for it being constructed out of uh, light wire is so that it adds less weight to your dry fly patterns. So when you're out on the water and you cast it and it lands, it lands on the surface of the water, the fly has a better chance of floating and, as opposed to sinking, right? It's not having all that extra weight. Now, a wet nymph hook, this one right here, these are two hooks that are of the same size, just one's a dry fly and one's a wet nymph. And your wet nymph hook is made of a heavier wire. I've got them sitting there close together, and I hope that you can see the difference in the thickness of the wire. Right, and for obvious, for the exact opposite reason, nymph hooks are made out of heavier wire. Right, they want to add weight to the fly so that it helps break the fly through the surface water and allow it to sink somewhere in the water column. Next, you have your streamer hook, which is that one right there, and it's going to be constructed of a heavy gauge wire as well. But most of the time, what you're going to find with your streamer hooks is that they have a longer hook shank uh, standard on them. And that's for imitating uh, small bait fish or large bait fish and uh, larger nymphs. That's why you want that lo uh, longer shank, right? You're able to create a longer po uh, profile. So next, we have our specialty hooks. And I have four different kinds of specialty hooks. There's are four different types of specialty hooks. And I'm just going to go with these on, uh, on left to right. So starting here, we have the, this is a, the actual model is a TMC 200R. And uh, it still has the same anatomy as any other hook would but if you look at it you can see that it's got this nice curved shank uh, this helps uh, create different profiles on the water like if you're tying a dry fly it tends to let that back end sag or the front end sag you know depending on how it how it lands on the surface of the water it tends to let it do a little thing there where either the front end or the rear sag depending on how it's hit yeah, depending on how it hits the water so you get a different effect using it. Uh, I like to mostly use this for like grasshoppers and stoneflies. It does a real good job with those. All right, something that has a generous size body to it. And then next, this is a saltwater, <clears throat> a saltwater hook. And uh, a saltwater hook is special because it's made out of a stainless steel uh, wire. So obviously, saltwater hook, right? You're going to use it in the salt. Salt's corrosive, so you make your uh, your hooks out of uh, stainless steel, so the salt doesn't corrode the hook. So, yeah, typically use that on saltwater patterns. I use it in freshwater some, especially for clouds or minnows. And uh, crayfish, similar patterns. Now you got your round shrimp hook. It has a 
for uh, caddis and shrimp imitations. It's just uh, these uh, types, these uh, shrimp caddis bugs, uh, midges, they tend to, uh, the natural insect that you imitate tends to like to curl up into a ball a little bit when it's out drifting in the current. So you got a nice little rounded hook that you can tie that guy on there. So just another little thing that you can do there. And then lastly, this one looks an awful lot like one of the standard hooks, don't I? Well, and it pretty much is. The reason why I included this one is, is this is a size 12 dry fly hook, but it has a extra, I think it was a 3X long hook shank. So even though it's still a dry fly, you've got that specialty feature where you can select the length of the hook shank. So you can have the same size wire, same hook gap, but now you've got a longer hook shank for maybe you needed to do like a small cricket pattern or or just uh, something of that sort, right? Where you still needed that same size 12 wire gap combination or any other size hook combination, but you just wanted that extra length of hook shank to help you make a, a more precise imitation. So that about wraps it up for your types and styles of hooks. From there, we're going to talk a little bit about sizes. So you see where we started up here at the number 10. Then we jump down 12, 14, 16, 18. You learn that as the number increases, the hook size gets smaller. And that's really all you need to know about size. Uh, just when you're looking at them in a pack, you see uh, something on the label there that tells you it's something. Uh, it's a number 14 or it's a number 12 or it's a number, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just giving you information about the size of the hook, whether it, how small it is or how large it is. So next we'll talk uh, a little bit about the anatomy of a hook. And uh, I've got a nice little slide that I'm going to go ahead and flip to right now. And... Uh, You'll notice on this slide that I've got all the little parts labeled of the hook. And uh, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory what each part does. But uh, every hook's going to have at least these basic components. You're going to have an eye. You're going to have the hook shank. You're going to have the gap, the bend, the barb, and the hook point. Every hook that you use will have those main points. And I uh, just wanted to introduce you to that so like maybe... When you see some of my other tying videos, if I go through and say something about something on the hook, some part of the hook, you at least know where I'm talking about if you didn't have that knowledge already. And uh, that kind of wraps it up. There's really not much more to say here. These are your your hooks. They're the probably in, in terms of importance, they're probably number two to your vice, right? It's hard to hold on to a hook without a vice. You can't have a fly without a hook. So, anyway, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like this video, uh, be sure to uh, like and leave me some comments below. Uh, check out some of my other videos I got. I got some videos on uh, fly tying and fly fishing. So, uh, you know, do the same with those. Check those out. Like, like them. Leave comments on them. It doesn't bother me. I, I love feedback. I love any type of uh, information that I can get. Uh, as far as the content of my videos, how I can improve it, how I can get better. Uh, or even if I'm already doing a good job, tell me I'm doing a good job. I'd like it. I'll take anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, check out my other videos. Like, uh, like them, comment on them. If you like uh, th those videos that you see and everything, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll try to keep uh, fresh videos posted every Sunday. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.